Hello class. Let's work through an example on a molecule that I will draw on the board shortly. And let's see if we can predict how many signals we would get and what are the splitting patterns. So the molecule that we want to look at has a skeletal structure that looks like this. So we have a ketone here. Okay. I'm just double checking if I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons is what we need. So one, two, three, four. So we have six carbons. Okay. So that's the molecule. So we need to predict how many signals we would expect for this molecule and what are the splitting patterns. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard here and ex draw out this molecule and ex just expand it out a little bit more. So we can have a better look here. <clears throat> okay. So we have a methyl group over here with three hydrogens. We have two there. And then another methyl over here. Okay. Now when you want to do figure out the uh, how many signals there are, you have to consider the stereochemistry. So we have to redraw this with our wedges and dashes. Okay. So we'll draw. Because stereochemistry matters when you're trying to determine if something is enantiotopic or enantiotopic or diastereotopic, right? Okay, now that we have the wedges and dashes in, now we can just start asking questions, okay? So, first question, are those three hydrogens equivalent? Yes, they are, because they're a methyl group. So we can just label those three hydrogens as A. Those, are, those three hydrogens are equivalent. Now, we can see that the methyl here and these methylenes, they're not going to be equivalent. Right? And you could do the replacement test, or you can just see that there's different connectivity, and they're not going to be equivalent. So the question that I have is, are these two hydrogens equivalent? Do we do HB saying they're equivalent or are they not equivalent? So we can do a replacement test and we will find that these two hydrogens are in fact enantiotopic, which makes them equivalent. You can also see if you take this molecule that's in the plane and rotate it 90 degrees and look right down it, you'll see that there's a plane of symmetry. <clears throat> okay. Now, we ask another question. Are those going to be equivalent? And the answer is yes, because there's a plane of symmetry. But are these hydrogens and those hydrogens equivalent? And when you do the replacement test, you will find that those are not equivalent to each, each other. Okay, next question. What about these two? Are those two equivalent? And you will find that they are indeed equivalent, but they are not the same. Those are not the same as those. And then these hydrogens here, they're a methyl group, and they are going to be another signal. Now you could, you, it's logical to ask, hey, uh, is this methyl group, is it equivalent to that methyl group? Do the replacement test, and you will find that they are not equivalent, that they are chemically distinct methyl groups. So based off of that analysis, we expect how many signals? A, B, C, D, E. We would expect five signals. Okay. So that's the first part of the analysis. Whenever you're asked to figure out splitting patterns, you need to figure out how many signals there are. So that's the first thing that we did. So we would expect five signals. Now the next 
question that was asked, what are the splitting patterns? So what is the splitting pattern for A, B, C, D, and E? <clears throat> now we just do the N plus 1 rule. So the splitting pattern for A. So A is, going, is attached to this carbon. So we have to go to the adjacent carbon, which is right there. And then we ask how many hydrogens are attached. There's two. 2 plus 1 is 3, making HA a triplet. Now, let's ask about HB. HB is connected to this carbon here. So we have to go to the adjacent carbons. This adjacent carbon has hydrogens. That adjacent carbon has no hydrogens. So we have three hydrogens on A. 3 plus 1 is 4, which would make HB a quartet. Right. Now this carbon has no hydrogens on it at all, so there's going to be no NMR signal for that one. Now we have this guy. Same analysis here. We go to the adjacent carbons and ask how many hydrogens are on this one. There's 0. How many on this one? There's 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, so C is going to be a triplet. Let's skip to E for right now, okay? E. Well, those three hydrogens there are attached to this carbon here, so we have to go to the adjacent carbon and ask how many hydrogens are attached. There are 2. 2 plus 1 is a triplet. Now this one, D, this one's going to be a little interesting. All right. So if we apply the N plus 1 rule here, let's see what happens. Okay. So we want, so these hydrogens, we want to know how they split. So they're attached to this carbon. So we go to the adjacent carbon, which is this one. There's hydrogens on them. Okay. But then this hydrogen, carbon, sorry, is it another adjacent carbon? And it has hydrogens on it. What do we do? Okay. Well, when... The hydrogens are not equivalent. Do you see how those are C's and that is an E? When they are not equivalent, you have to do the N plus 1 rule separately. So what do I mean by that? So we just do it one at a time. So let's focus on this one. There's three hydrogens, so three plus one equals four, so that is a quartet. Now, what about C? Well, that's two plus one equals three, which is a triplet. So HD splits as a quartet of triplets. And that is set that right there is called a complex splitting pattern. Now it does not matter which way you write this. It, you could have written it a triplet of a quartet. Either one works. It's interchangeable. Okay. But that is now introducing complex splitting patterns. So now let's go and see what that looks like on the NMR spectrum, okay? Look at that. So when we come here, you can see everything's labeled. We expected A to be a triplet, which that's exactly what it is. We expected E to be a triplet, shown right there. And then we have 
B, which we, what did we call that? We said that would be a quartet. Now that's kind of hard to see the quartet here because C is a triplet and they overlap with one another. So it makes it really difficult to see. But if we could get better resolution and separate B and C out a little bit more, then we would see, in fact, that B is a quartet and C is a triplet. So you could probably see this a little bit better if you zoom in. But as of right now, you can see that it's really uh, complex here. Now, D right here is a, a quartet of triplets. So what would we expect the splitting pattern to be here? Okay. So let me show you this real quick. Okay. So if we look at the signal A, so HA, right? And I'm going to represent that signal with a line, right? Okay. So that's the one signal for HA. But we know that HA a signal gets split into what? It gets split into a triplet. So we would go like this. Okay, we would take that signal and split it into three. So do you see how I'm just drawing? It's a splitting, it's called a splitting tree. And so what that splitting tree is showing us is that we would expect our NMR signal to have three peaks or a triplet, right? So when we come here, that's exactly what we see. We see the three peaks right here. One, two, three. Now, if I do that same analysis for, let's say, HB, HB is one signal, but it splits into what? A quartet. So the splitting tree would look something like this. And so there's the, the splitting pattern right there. So if we come, okay. Okay, now with a complex splitting pattern, it's a little bit different, okay? And in a complex splitting pattern, so if we have HD here as one signal, that signal is first split up into a, a quartet. Remember how we predicted HD to be a, a quartet of triplets. So these four right here is the quartet. But then that quartet is now split into a triplet. So we would expect the triplet to be split into triplets like that. Okay. So what we would expect to see in an NMR spectrum would be a signal split into what is that? 12. Okay. So you could just imagine a signal with 12 peaks right there. I don't think that's 12 though. But you get the point. Okay? That's what we expect to see. But when we go to the NMR, what does it look like? It has one, two, three, four, five, six signals. So that looks like a sextet. But it's not a sextet. That is a quartet of triplets. Now that's a little mind boggling. Like why are there only six signals when we would expect 12? Well, that's the really cool thing here. And that is shown in this little diagram here. So that right here, that is the signal of HD. Remember these protons right here are HD. So that's our HD signal. Now that is first split into a quartet, okay? And then that quartet is split into uh, our 
the quartets are split into triplets. That's what we would expect to see. So this drawing right here is the very thing that you saw me draw here. Okay, That's what we would expect. But it is a what looks like a sextet. Now the reason for that is when that signal HD is split into the quartet, let's do this one at a time. Okay, Let's split the first signal, this signal right there, into a triplet. Okay. Now watch, we're going to split this one right here into a triplet and watch very carefully at what happens. Do you see how these right here overlaid? And then I'll do this third one right here. Do you see how there's overlay again? And then I'll do this one. Overlaid again. So what do we, what do we observe? One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we see. And that's a, co a complex splitting pattern. Okay, so if you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know.